with the weather warming up and video card prices dropping, it felt like the perfect time to build a brand new PC. So that's what I did. Our computer runs games like Fortnite, Minecraft, even heavy single player games like Cyberpunk, all for a simple $500. And I'll show you how to build it. Oh, and thank you to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. You guys rock. I understand that not everyone wants to buy secondhand components, especially new builders, so this video is geared mostly towards them. But I'll still have secondhand alternatives if you're okay with that sacrifice. Unfortunately, you can take the boy out of the used market, but not the used market out of the boy. I'm sorry. I'll mention any alternatives and upgrades as we go along, and all the information will be linked in the description and on my website, oztalkshw.fun. To get us started, I bought the Ryzen 5 5500 processor, and I got it for $84 at Micro Center. You can also find it for about $90 on Amazon and on Newegg. A used Ryzen 5 3500X or a used Ryzen 5 3600 are also great alternatives if you want to save up to $20. I bought the $80 Gigabyte B450M DS3H Wi-Fi motherboard. And I absolutely love this motherboard for beginner builders because of its features. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, it has four RAM slots, and it also supports overclocking and undervolting. You can save up to $20 by choosing a different B450M motherboard or by choosing an A520M motherboard. Now you will lose overclocking and undervolting on the A520M one, but that might not even matter to you. Now most motherboards do not have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. So if that is important to you, then make sure you buy an adapter. And I'll link the ones I recommend in the description as well. I bought 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM for $35 at Micro Center. Amazon on Newegg will have the same size kit for about $30 to $35. Really aren't any alternatives here, just get 3200 MHz cast latency 16 RAM, and you're good to go. When it comes to storage, buy as much as you can afford. I bought a 500 gig PCIe SSD for $40 at Micro Center. Make sure it's the M.2 format, or the stick of gum format, and make sure that it is not SATA. Now there's nothing wrong with SATA, but a PCIe SSD is way faster for about the same price. To power the system, I picked up the PowerSpec 500 watt power supply for $40. I've used it in a handful of builds in the past and it gets the job done. That's really all I have to say. If you can't find this PowerSpec unit because it's a Micro Center in-house brand, then the Thermaltake Smart is a good alternative. Now if you have about $10 extra to spend, then I would recommend upgrading to the MSI MAG 550. It's a little bit better and more reliable than these units. Also shout out to Zach from ZTT for putting that power supply on my radar. And the moment that you've all been waiting for, the video card. I chose the Intel Arc A580. It has eight gigs of VRAM with no memory limitations, ray tracing, hardware encoding and decoding. It's overall just a great choice for $165. If you're okay with the used market, then some great alternatives are the RTX 2060 Super, the RX 5700 XT, and the RX 6600 M, all about the same price from AliExpress. Now, if you have about $25 or so extra to spend, then upgrade to the RX 6600. And lastly, but certainly not least, I bought the Montec Air 100 ARGB case for $65 for Micro Center. This case is phenomenal value. It's good design and it has good airflow, but it also comes with four pre-installed ARGB fans with a lighting hub and with a fan splitter included. And I've crunched the numbers. If I were to buy a cheaper, worse case and some cheap fans, it would cost about the same price but I would have a worse case. So this is a better choice. Cases have a ton of alternatives. If you want something cheaper, the Thermaltake Versa series is always a good recommendation. But if you want something a little bit different, then you can try maybe the BitPhoenix Nova Mesh. I'll have a lot of other recommendations 
in my description links as well. I paid $510 for this entire build, the base build, but it can go as low as $480 if you try the second hand market. There are extra goodies as well, like cable extensions and spray paint to add a little bit more personality to the computer, which I like. Totally optional, you don't have to do it. But with that being said, let's build the computer. So I cut my hair and the computer turned out phenomenal. I actually really enjoy this. Everything about it, the look, the size, and the performance, which we will get into a little bit later. But three things you need to know if you end up building this computer. Firstly, make sure you plug in the antenna to the back of your computer. They come with your motherboard and you won't be able to connect to Wi-Fi properly without them. 
Secondly, when you first turn on your computer, spam the delete key on your keyboard to enter the BIOS and enable the extreme memory profile. Super easy to forget, but it makes a big difference, so don't forget to do it. And lastly, if you're using an Intel Arc GPU, enable resizable bar. Your GPU will not perform properly if you do not enable this. You'll do this in the BIOS as well. There should be a video on screen showing you how to do it, and I'll have a text tutorial linked in the description as well. But once you've done all of those things, then you're pretty much good to go. You install Windows drivers, and you can play some games. So why don't we do that? The PC delivered solid performance in Fortnite DX12. Using low settings and a far view distance, I averaged around 130 FPS. There was some choppiness in a few areas, but overall, it was fine for casual play. Locking the FPS to 120 fixed a lot of the choppiness that I experienced. The PC breezed through Rainbow Six Siege. At 1080p, using the very high preset, we averaged over 250 FPS in the built-in benchmark and I was actually able to snag a kill in an online match despite being super rusty. And the Insta360 link was there to show just how bad I was. Why? I was setting up my EMP. So I've used the Insta360 link for the last few days now and it's a pretty insane 4K webcam. Not only does it have great picture quality with its 4K resolution and half inch sensor, I actually used it for all my B-roll overhead shots that you saw at the beginning of the video, but it has some awesome software and AI features as well. The face tracking, for example, absolutely blew me away. It's fast, it's snappy, it's precise, and it's smooth. Look at that! Hardware-wise, it sits on a three-axis gimbal so it can rotate and pan in almost any direction. It even does a cute little dance when you first plug it in to show this off. This is especially helpful for their desk view mode, which allows the camera to point directly towards your desk so you can show things off, like your cat. Say hi. Or not. Don't drink my tea, please. You also get some smart gesture controls that allow you to control the video feed with just using your hands. For example, making an L shape with a single hand allows you to control the zoom of the video. Or you can use the palm gesture to turn AI face tracking on or off. Their dedicated desktop app allows you to control the exposure, brightness, gimbal position, all from your computer. And they also have a streamer portrait mode, which is a vertical 9 by 16 aspect ratio for TikTok, Reels, and other vertical configurations. That's actually really, really cool. And through their latest update, you can actually remotely control the camera through your phone. You just click on the camera icon on the desktop software, scan the QR code, and that's it. Whoa. Whoa. Overall, I'm super satisfied with the Insta360 Link. I think they offer a ton of features that traditional webcams just do not, and they do it really, really well. The first 20 people that use my affiliate link in the description will get a 16% discount on the Insta360 Link and a free tripod. So thank you so much Insta360 for sponsoring this video. Link in the description with all the details. Let's continue gaming, see how this $500 computer does. Oh, that hurt. New World was a ton of fun as well. The CPU does struggle in the town center with lots of players, but in open areas and in simple combat, we're averaging around 100 FPS at medium settings. Cyberpunk 2077 averaged 75 FPS with the in-game benchmark using medium settings and quality FSR. In the opening desert scene, the PC sat in the 80s and looked good while doing it. The PC even completed the ray tracing benchmark. Using the ray tracing medium preset and quality XCSS, which is like FSR, the PC averaged 41 FPS in the benchmark. In the same opening desert scene, we comfortably sat in the 50s, and that's a great showing from such an affordable PC. Now the only downside in gaming is Hogwarts Legacy. I still don't know why this GPU just does so poorly in this video game. At medium settings, using quality FSR, the game averaged about 60 FPS but it stuttered so much, I wouldn't say it's playable. Sadly, if you're looking to play this game, this PC just isn't the right option for you. Overall, I'm super satisfied with this PC, and excluding Hogwarts Legacy, 
which is an unfortunate anomaly. It performs really well for only $500. The full parts list, along with any alternatives and upgrades, will be in the description. So thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. You guys rock. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.